the first hindrance to rising to a higher dimension in the spirit the first hindrance that will stop you from coming up hither by the spirit of god is called disinterest towards god and spiritual things disinterest towards god disinterest towards god and spiritual things there are men and women who will never rise to superior dimensions in the spirit not because of an attack from satan there is a determination from them as an act of their will that i'm not interested in god and i'm not interested in the things of the spirit i have met people that way they have met me they have listened to my messages and you would think they would be so transformed i have met people who as an act of their will they have made up their mind as a commitment that they will not be serious with god this interest completely towards god and towards spiritual things this interest towards prayer this interest towards the ministry of the word this interest towards church have you have you met people like that no matter how spectacular you share your testimony they will watch this way it's not an attack they just as an act of their will they have not seen the relevance of god nor spiritual things in their lives there is no coming up higher for such a person as much as god is wonderful and merciful and compassionate he allows men to show their interest then he brings you i looked and then he said come up here this interest towards god when you really want to help a man to do business with god you have to pray for grace for that person to as an act of his or her will find interest in the things of god are we together now there are people who are not interested in anything prayer they are not interested in anything word study they are not interested in anything spiritual development they would argue and argue and say to what end they would listen to a message like this and all they can find oh, well he's a nice man i like the way he speaks and wow see the people saying amen what nice people i think if people are like this our society will be better that's all you got from this this interest as funny as that sounds there are people even in your region like that their issue is not ignorance they have access to anybody who can help them they are just not interested there are children like that there are parents like that their children are prayer warriors fasting giants apostles and prophets and yet the father or the mother they can say wow i hear that um you are doing well in fact i hear right now that you bought a church building thumbs up you are my son and yet the man will never be changed by his son salmon it's not an attack he will even advise you and say let me advise you do ministry well make sure you love god you have one building now make sure you consider expansion i think that's a good idea this is the man advising you you say can i pray now that, that, that prayer thing don't worry i'm okay i'm fine all by myself and you see because god gave men a will he will respect you even at the detriment of your efficiency in the spirit are we together god cannot help a man beyond his level of interest for spiritual things the bible says to be spiritually minded is life but to be carnally minded is death even if you do not have the power to sponsor that transition your willingness to want god your willingness to love god your willingness to love his house his word prayer your willingness to love the realm where you stand in the anointing being a blessing to people that's enough but if god does not find that willingness believe me you will not go far with him this interest in spiritual things some of you when you came to uk here you watch as an act of your will you began to prioritize a lot of things and god was not part of it and for some sadly god is still not part of it you like the idea of god in fact one of your plan is to build an auditorium like this so that you can help churches but your passion for god you're not interested it's time for everything come up hither it's a call to use the gift of your will to say i need you mm, i need you <laughs> i need you i don't know my way around this spiritual this this jungle of the realm of the spirit but lord i need you 
the Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him not them who assume he's there them that call upon him you must declare your interest for someone you came for service this morning and the Lord is saying I am ready to help you if you are willing 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 complete disinterest it is true that the prophetic is in your destiny the apostolic the pastoral the healing ministry kingdom financing all of this is true but are you interested in God enough are we together now are you interested in him enough is prayer a distraction to you or you perceive it to be a distraction the study of the word how about the house of God there are many people who have not learned the value of the house of God when the psalmist said I rather be a doorkeeper how can a man who is a king what is in the house of God that is not in his palace that man's palace was made of gold and yet he said I would give that up to be in his presence that means there must be something in his presence that gold cannot give there must be something in his presence silver cannot give there must be something in his presence employment cannot give don't reduce God to an employment letter don't reduce God to just a coin silver he gives all this but he's more than that is someone learning the value of his presence to a point that Moses now a prophet and a deliverer would say if your presence would not go with us do not send us from here the man was willing to assume the position of delay provided God's presence will not go how can a man prefer delay I rather be here in the UK and not have a house not have a car if your presence will not go with me a man can choose that that means there's something about his presence you must learn hallelujah this interest for the things of God In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 4. Let's hurry up so we can wrap up this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 4. I'm showing you the first hindrance. He said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Verse 2. He says, For men shall be lovers of their own self. Does that look like today? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy uh-huh without natural affection truth breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good final verse traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God they would give up God a thousand times to embrace pleasure is someone learning as you're listening to me allow the Spirit of God that there is a circumcision that is happening within your heart and don't fight it that circumcision that that cutting away is bringing you to a higher level in the spirit there are things God cannot do with you with your current version disinterest for someone you came this morning and your cry should be walk on my heart my passion has died walk on my heart oh God I don't know what happened it didn't used to be like this before I came to the United Kingdom or it didn't used to be like this before I got a job it didn't used to be like this before I got married before I got children now the vicissitudes of life have eroded away my passion for the things of God there needs to be a restoration it's an emergency case are we together because I can tell you everything you hold on to that God is not the one holding on to you will lose it and you believe me I don't know everything but I've sojourned this life a bit to know that it is vanity to hold anything God is not holding eventually you will find out that it will evaporate like a vapor in one moment I have seen the influence of many diminish overnight I've seen the wealth of many diminish overnight I've seen governments change and with one policy millionaires became paupers overnight it is only what God keeps that is really kept nobody can keep anything God has not kept listen my dear people listen to me I want you to cultivate a hunger and a passion for God that as an act of your will you will make up your mind 
that from this session I'm ready to come up hither ready I am ready ready with my life that everything you have designed for me I'm ready to become it but that would be at the mercy of your interest that Lord whatever it takes to fan my prayer life back to life my word study life my passion for the house of God tired of giving excuses that is because I'm a mother tired of giving excuses that is because now I have children tired of saying I'm living far away it's a lie everybody has time for what you place value on did you hear what I said there are many people who would not go to the house of God but you call them and say I have a check of 10,000 pounds where are you I'm at the other end of London can you come I'm coming right away I've searched my life and I pray to God every time I'm even while I'm standing here that if there is anything that can take his place in my life may he never give me no 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 you know I've said amen many times amen with tears in my eyes believe me you see when you see God using people in spectacular ways it's more than an impartation it's more than good preaching it's more than Greek and Hebrew you can shout all you can there is a presence factor that only your hunger you see The nations will not listen to you just because you have something to say our world is full of eloquent men our world is full of wise men our world is full of technocrats intelligent men who have stretched their mental faculty border to border when i had an invitation to come to harvard and deliver a lecture i went to god in prayer and i said lord i'm not a lecturer i'm not an academic i'm an, an academician why did you do this because I know that everything God does, there is purpose behind it. And God said, I'm fulfilling something that I told you, that if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. And if that is done in the religious world alone, it will look like the bias of spirituality. But if that happens within a secular institution, now those professors are not fools. This is Harvard. And when God brought glory to his name, I returned back. And I remember this. After this, I looked. <laughs> After this. No, I don't look behind for too long. Thank you. Well done. After this, I looked. After the sound of revival, great things that God did. My goodness, my phone was full of text messages and you know all kinds of things I remember preparing to go back the night I would leave UK I got down my knees and I said oh God show me mercy let the foolishness that has destroyed great men not catch up with me after this I looked now we are preparing for sound of revival US UK and in the midst of the wonderful things happening Canada all of these places and sometimes you know people sincerely send wonderful commendations but after this I look after this anything that happens in time is not worth your distraction rejoice over it but after this I remember a gentleman who flew all the way from the US had been mightily impacted and this gentleman came in to come and sow a seed met I think we met in Ghana and then I prayed for him he returned back and God opened up his you know his financial destiny this gentleman was making five figures every month doing very well and he decided he took was it a hundred thousand dollars or something of that sort just to come and sow into my life and when he came down to Nigeria I met him and when he was saying all those things he first did a video and gave our people to show me and then when he came I looked at him it was such a spectacular testimony and as I looked at him the Lord told me he said that money is not your own tell him to go back to US with it and sow it into the Koinonia account there in US for the conference yes sir 
what do I have that did not come from you? And then when I was done, it was such a great testimony. It's a good thing as a leader to teach people and see them become. That is your pride. But after this, I looked. After tonight, we wrap up this session. We have our session with the workers. But after that, even after God does the great things that you'll be doing here in the UK in months to come, believe me, you've not seen anything like it. You, if you think you saw his hand last year, watch what he's going to do this year. Yeah. Because the Bible says they go from strength to strength. You will see his hand in spectacular ways. Look forward to the sound of revival. Hallelujah. But even after this, we will still look away from this but towards him because before this came he was he still is so when we look at this for a while and once it is done we take our gaze immediately let the world keep doing the clapping but we set our gaze it's a big secret i'm showing you hindrances disinterest perhaps you are in this place and you were just invited because you were told you know sincerely it was just supposed to be a session with the workers but i decided that look let's just open it up and that's why we decided to limit all of this <laughs> hallelujah it's the reason why you see that we restricted a lot of things you know because we didn't want people beyond the space and then to have any chaos here after this If you can look beyond everything around your life, good or bad, then you are ready to continue with God. When bad things happen, you learn from them and you keep looking. When great things happen, you use them to be encouraged, but you keep looking. That way you have mastered continuity. That after 10 years, you will still be standing. And when people say, what is your secret? You say it's because I've learned how to look. When I cry, I still look. When I laugh, I still look. My feelings, my victories, my crowns, all my scars do not stop me from looking. Are we together now? Let me wrap up. So number one, disinterest for the things of God. Can I give you number two and three? Number two, someone is learning. I wish I had all night to discuss this. The state of of your heart the second hindrance in fact you can call it the corruption of the heart the second hindrance to men experiencing God at a higher level is the state of your heart the corruption of the state of a man's heart Jeremiah chapter 9 from verse um, okay Jeremiah 17 9 and 10 says the heart of man is deceptive and it is desperately wicked it says who above all who can know it then verse 10 says i the lord i search the heart watch this i try the reins to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his findings can you imagine this psalm 24 3 and 4 psalm 24 Spirit, have your way in us today. Spirit, take your place as we are changed. Spirit, have your way in us today. Spirit, take your place as we are changed forevermore psalm 24 who shall ascend to the hill of the lord is a hill in the spirit these are the requirements or who shall stand in his holy place verse 4 he that hath clean hands he that hath a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully let me tell you the truth in my work with god and believe me i'm a student of revival i have studied the moves of god 
the greatest requirement to being used by God is the purity of your heart. Beyond your prayer life, beyond your fasting, beyond your word study, as important as they are, the state of your heart vetoes every other spiritual activity. You can fast all you can with a corrupted heart, you only wasted your time. You can pray all you can. That's that cry of the psalmist, purify my heart. I've done a teaching on that. You can go to Koinonia Global and get it. Purify my heart. Hmm. Hallelujah. You can do many correct things, but not with a perfect heart. Like Amaziah. He did what was right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. A pure heart. The state of your heart. Write this for reference. In 2 Kings chapter 4, the full text is from verse 8 to 31. But for sake of time, I would just, just let you have the rendition so that you will learn. So the Bible talks about the woman in Shunem, the Shunammite woman, that she had a child by the word of the prophet Elisha. And then in the course of time, the child became sick and the father sent that the mother would come and nurse the child and while he was on her lap the child died the bible says the woman got her donkeys and was on her way to meet elisha and when she met elisha gehazi met elisha sent gehazi to meet her on the way and he asked are you fine is everything well and she said i'm fine when she met the prophet she said i didn't ask you for a child it was of your making you said you would pray for me to have a child now the child is dead i've come to you and do you know what happened elisha gave gehazi his rod and said go with it at once don't be so distracted to greet anybody if anyone greets you don't even respond and go and lay that rod on the child and the child will come back to life and so gehazi went ahead and the woman said i'm not leaving you i don't trust this your man and so he prevailed she prevailed upon him and he was going with her but gehazi had gone ahead of them the bible says when gehazi went he met the child dead and he placed the rod what happened the correct rod by the correct prophet and yet he did not come back to life because what powers the rod is the state of your heart the state of your heart is that battery like you have a clock and there is a battery behind it you can buy a new clock if that battery is not there it will not work the state of your heart there are many people who have received impartations oil upon oil mantle upon mantle but it fell dead upon a corrupted heart are we together it is not just about receiving it is about the purity of your heart what makes your heart pure i will tell you the desire in your heart to see God glorified beyond making a name for yourself that's what makes your heart pure the moment you get to a point in your life where your entire life is all about giving God glory like we say in koinonia Jesus revealed Jesus glorified everything about your life is one of the biggest secrets of the life of this man standing before you it is not necessarily because I prayed the most fasted the most studied the most no there's something about god finding a heart that is sincere towards him that you sincerely desire to see him glorified that was the prayer i prayed before i left coming here i said lord i'm on my way going again the mission remains the same to see jesus glorified people will clap they will say apostle and this but be glorified I will tell you this once you do not work on your heart there are things God cannot trust you with he cannot trust you with people he cannot trust you with resources he cannot trust you with opportunities you know why the answer is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8 when you read from this 11 to 17 lest your heart be lifted up in the presence of abundance achievements accomplishments you tell yourself my power and the might of my hand has given me this there are many preachers who are great but cannot be used by God beyond certain 
realms. Do you know why? Because somewhere locked up in our hearts, that desire for a name, that desire for fame, and it's a temptation that befalls all men. You must resist it. Resist it. Are we together now? There are business people who cannot be used by God because the day you make your first million dollars, 10 million dollars, 100 million dollars, my goodness, God will have to queue to listen to you too. I mean God, he will come and join the queue and you say, I'm busy, who are you? King of kings, it doesn't matter. You just join the queue. Ah. Till the nations. Now you understand the song. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Glorify when your desire for power becomes as a tool to help the nation see Jesus, then you are ready for authentic, genuine power. When your desire for wealth is not just to flash designers and say, I am this and that and that. No, that's too small a reason. God's program is bigger than just having a good dress, nothing wrong with that. But if that is the circumference of your pursuit. You're wasting your time. As far as doing business with God is concerned, forever Koinonia will live to sing his praises and to let the nation see him. I tell you, it's an intentional project to discourage anything that would just lead to the promotion of self. Thank God for Joshua Selman. But with or without me, God's program can happen. It's an honor to be part of his program. Listen very carefully. As God lifts you, you must be careful. People can clap you to your downfall. And when you fall, they will say, come and see him. We said it. Hmm. The state of your heart. A broken and a contrite heart. A broken and a contrite heart. A heart that is ready to tremble before God. Lord, you have given me this grace, you have given me this glory, but it is all yours. My life belongs to you. My resources belong to you. The influence belongs to you. The songs, the preachings, the everything. And you let the nations know the safest position for a believer is to hide behind the cross. The safest position, hide behind the cross. The world will call you a fool, but you will last. Our obsession for celebrity living. And don't get me wrong. God is all about increasing men and giving him visibility. But the purpose is for his glory. You see that now. When it becomes about self, the marketing of self, making a name for self. Now you are behaving like Nimrod in Genesis 11. Go to let us build a city whose tower will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Let me tell you, my dear people, you never spend your life exalting Jesus and then become a nonentity. It's not true. In lifting him, you will find out that you are lifted too for his sake. I've given this example. Remember during our retreat? My focus is the top of this pulpit. But it's impossible to focus here and not see here. My Bible is not resting here. However, because this is what is supporting this, as I lift this, everything connected to it is lifted too. You see how it happens? Glorify now thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. So if God finds out that he's deriving great glory from your life, what happens is that he keeps lifting you for his name's sake empowering you for his namesake honoring you for his namesake this is what God does so when you see the results behind this ministry and what God is doing I'm teaching you this for those who just came for those who are family here let me tell you the truth learn this as a principle 
This is not about being humble. It's about being wise. When you try to take God's glory and let men see you, they will clap for you. But that will be the last time. But when you let men see him, they will clap for him. And it will be your joy to be the one lifting him like a trophy. And that applause will continue and remain for as long as you are there. It's a wiser bargain. The state of your heart. Place your hand on, on your chest and say, purify my heart. Go ahead, pray in one minute. Purify my heart. Purify my conscience. Someone pray in one minute. And for those who are following across the globe, following on Koinonia Global, go ahead, pray. Purify my heart. The first hindrance to coming up hither is a disinterest towards God and spiritual things. Second, the state of your heart. Hallelujah. See, many other things, I'm not going into them, but things like pride and so on and so forth, they are byproducts of a corrupted heart. An arrival mentality. You see that? Our generation is a proud generation. We have to trust God for grace. To repent from pride is a cancer. It kills. Literally. The moment you find yourself beating your chest or asking other people to help you beat your chest and say, well, you see it. It's still the same thing. Can a man receive anything that God did not give? Can a man heal any sick body without the power of God? No. The doctors tell you to swallow the tablets and even they cannot explain fully what happens after you swallow it. That one is between your body and the creator. Because there are times a tablet can decide to fight you. The tablet you say is not a living thing. It can fight you and it knows where to go in your body and fight you till it kills you. So at that point, it's not medicine and surgery again. It's the creator's help. Is someone listening? That prayer purify my heart must remain your prayer even up until the evening. Let me give you the last key and we're done. What is the final hindrance that stops men from rising higher, being used by God mightily in their generations? Lack of proper mentorship and guidance. Lack of proper mentorship and guidance. You want to listen to this before we pray. Lack of proper mentorship and guidance. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 says, to stand in the old path, he says, the ancient path, it calls it 616 Jeremiah. It says, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. Please look at me, believers. There is a path in the spirit that leads to glory and leads to victory. There is a path in the spirit that leads to mediocrity and failure. Are we together now? No matter how desirous you have a good heart, agreed. You have a passion for the things of God, agreed. You will need to be guided. There are many paths in the spirit that lead men to glory. But until you are guided and helped, if you are not helped, you may not get there. There are many sincere people. I wrote something down here and I want you to listen. You will reflect the accuracy or the limitations of those you choose to follow. You will reflect the accuracy or the limitations of those you choose to follow. The implication of followership is that you will eventually be a reflection of the accuracy or the limitations is the reason why God is going to judge teachers because when people place their trust on you and follow you believing you are following Christ by the time you manipulate destroy deceive them the Bible except you've torn it from your Bible the Bible tells us that teachers will have a greater weight of judgment because influence is a trust when people trust you to alter their minds, to shape their understanding. Many of you will get up and make destiny-defining decisions 
based on the truth you have received now and if i come here and lie to you and manipulate you and deceive you you see that now look at the multiplier effect you will teach what you have learned now to someone maybe your group maybe some children somewhere that is the reason why as ministers of god we must stay with god and cry for his mercy so that you don't bring things that destroy people you can learn the truth and quietly correct yourself but you would have led to a, a, a wide error one truth that is not communicated properly can bring a mass dis i mean it can it can impede your progress in the spirit hallelujah in acts chapter 8 from verse 26 the bible talks to us about a, a eunuch a utopian eunuch he was on his way and the lord spoke to philip let's just read it arise and go down to the south Unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Uh -huh. He says, and he arose and went and behold, a man of Utopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Utopians, who had the charge of all her treasure. This was a very serious man and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Next verse. He was returning and sitting in his chariot. He read the book of Isaiah. Uh-huh next verse then the spirit said unto him philip now go near and join that chariot verse 30 and philip ran thither unto him and heard him read the prophet isaiah and said understandest what thou readest that man was reading what he was reading was true but he had no understanding he said how can i accept some man my goodness how can i except some preacher except some teacher should guide me the bible says and he desired that he would come up and sit with him there are many people whose undoing spiritually today was not a product of rebellion they only followed the wrong people there are principles and practices they adopted to their spiritual life and adopted in ministry their hearts are sincere but they only followed wrongly they were wrongly mentored into trivializing prayer they were wrongly mentored into trivializing the word they were wrongly mentored into trivializing character and integrity and moral excellence they were wrongly mentored into trivializing relationships look at me they were wrongly mentored into trivializing growth and transformation they were wrongly mentored into trivializing wealth and abundance they were wrongly mentored into trivializing attacks from satan they were wrongly mentored into trivializing the value of transformation you will become a reflection of the accuracy or the limitations of who you choose to follow in ministry i've met many people great people good people i remember the earliest memories of this um was when we were the northern part now in Zaria, Kaduna State, Nigeria, I remember a gentleman who came, I was counseling, and he walked up to me, very arrogant and confident, and I looked at him, I said, wow, this is interesting. And I saw a spirit in a vision now, behind him, just standing. And then I'm looking at this gentleman, and he was explaining a few things. He just said he came so that we'll agree and pray. And I looked at him. I was seeing what was wrong with him. I was seeing a spirit behind him. And then I politely tried to tell him, my friend, look, I'm seeing something behind you. And he, he shot me down immediately. No, no. Don't believe in those things. There's nothing wrong with me. I just came. I, I said, how do I help this man now? This is me watching this person like I'm watching a television. I'm seeing what is wrong with him. I'm trying to help him. And he's telling me, no, he just came so that we agree. Anyway, I prayed for him. That gentleman woke up like after 15 minutes. And for the next one week, true story, he kept sending me text messages. I said, what is wrong? You've rattled my theology, everything I've been taught. I didn't believe this. Where do I start from now? Because that is like canceling everything I believe. I said, no, you don't have to cancel. Well, edit what you believe. Not everything is wrong. But there are some things that are nonsense in the world of the spirit. You see that? <laughs> what do you believe about God? What do you not believe about God? 
What do you believe about Satan? What do you believe about failure? What do you believe about growth? What do you believe about prosperity? What do you believe about poverty? What do you believe about success? Victory. What do you believe about defeat? Listen carefully. What do you believe about fasting? What do you believe about prayer? What do you believe about consecration? What do you believe about increase? It matters how you are mentored. When God wants to help a man, after you encounter Jesus, he grants you the opportunity to sit under the grace of a teaching priest who loves Jesus, has accurate understanding of the word and loves you. Three things. He must love Jesus, he must have accurate understanding of the word and he must love you. Because any of these three that goes wrong, you are in trouble. If he does not love God, even if he loves you, you are still in trouble. You see that? Because he would download error sincerely. The source is wanting. If he loves God and he does not love you, he will have, he will be cold fitted towards getting the truth across to you. If he loves God and he loves you but does not have access to the truth, he will be like a sincere driver who says, enter the car, but I'm a learner. That's not wickedness. That's ignorance. He just wants to help you. Especially when you are carrying all your children. Say, you and all your children come into the car. Your big luxurious bosses, he said, you just come in and be very comfortable. You can even go to bed while I drive. I'm learning, but I think I'm smart enough to navigate through the roads. You see that? It takes more than a good heart. It takes understanding. I have watched with humility sincere people being destroyed because of the demon of their ignorance. Your ignorance is always higher than you. You will be a slave to ignorance until the day you cry like the nation of Israel, I am tired. And you declare an exodus out of that Pharaoh of ignorance. You are learning the things you are learning now. Some of you never knew that success can destroy as much as failure. When Satan wants to bring failure to destroy you and you reject it, he will bring success. The most important thing is that he wants you destroyed. How is not his business? There are many breakthroughs that did not come from God. They were trapped by Satan because he knows that you have not been trained to manage success. So he will rush it to you and you will receive it thinking it is breakthrough and that becomes the reason for your death. It is not only the cross that can kill, a crown can kill too. There are many kings that died from their throne. They didn't die on the cross. Satan wants you to die, whether on the cross or on the throne. The difference is purpose. The one who dies on the cross dies towards getting to the throne. The one who dies on the throne dies because he's a fool. Herod died and immediately worms at him. Nebuchadnezzar lifted up himself in pride and he became an animal for years. But Jesus died on the cross, but that became the passage, the new and living way. You see that now? So, as we wrap up this morning, we have an evening session and I must let you rest now and prepare. This is a very, it's called a prophetic convergence. All our discussion was verse 1. After this, I look. That's all I've been saying. This, these four words. After this, I looked. It is your responsibility to go and find the this that has distracted you. Use this opportunity before evening. For someone is, after the business success, I stopped looking. You have to repent. It's time to look. After the ministerial strides, God is calling you. If you want to get to this second realm, chapter one has happened to you. Chapter two has happened to you. Reminded of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. Isaiah starts with a powerful prophecy by a true prophet himself. But by the time we get to chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, what must die for you to see? Because you see, this whole scriptures is about seeing again. After this, I looked. For someone, this will be your version. After he died, I saw. After pride died, after lust died, after carelessness died. And don't say it does not matter. If, it is, if you want to last, you have to pay attention to this. Are we together? This it does not matter is a spirit of carelessness 
it destroys people I don't pray but it doesn't matter I don't fast but it doesn't matter I don't love God I don't give there are some of you who don't give you see giving is not the only key that that makes you prosperous your value your understanding but giving connects you to the spiritual forces that bring you the assistance I wish I had time is one thing oh dear the power to prosper has nothing to do with money it is the power that advances men you cannot go forward if you don't have it you can have money without the power to prosper but it will never bless you because wisdom brings wealth but strength retains wealth when it has to do with retainership it's not wisdom again it's strength he says strong men retain that is why you can get and it can leave hallelujah praise the name of the Lord mentorship this is what you are receiving right now for someone you sacrifice the time you would have used doing certain things and you are sitting under this grace from morning and even up until evening you will be surprised how many years you have redeemed just sitting here right now 